Praise the Lord. Thomas Manton IV. The Lord spoke to me something very powerful this morning. I believe in fresh manna, fresh bread. And uh, he told me things about life. And I'm going to get more into this. This is going to be a, a roller coaster ride. I, I'm not going to finish in one session. I'm going to do this for a, a bit here and open this up, but I want to continue in this. This is a major word for people in the realm of their existence now. And I want to entitle this, Cre Create the Life You Want. I started with power to create the life you want. I thought, why put power to, well, you know, it just muddies up the whole, it's too long. Create the life you want. Trademark, Thomas Manton IV. I put a, a watch over this title worldwide. It's trademarked. Create the life you want. God, the universe, the laws of life, the laws of function, <laughs> functionality, have given us the ability to do that. I want to read a very daunting scripture first. Just, just to show you the gravity of the weight of this message. Psalm 103, verse 15. I believe it's 15, if I'm seeing it right. Yes. It says, As for man, his days are like grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourishes. In other words, when you're in the right soil under the sunlight, with water and nutrition and the right circumstances, you can flourish. It says then in verse 16, Psalm 103, verse 16, for the wind passes over it and it is gone and its place remembers it no more. Can you believe it? It flourishes for what? For a season. Verse 17, I love this. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. Those who fear him. In other words, if you don't fear him and walk with him, where's his mercy? People cry for his mercy and they say, well, he's merciful to everyone. To hell with that and to anyone that preaches that, you could end up with the evildoers. If you want to, if you want to bring deception to the body of Christ, which a lot of people do these days, I guess they have forever, and I'm also seeing it, you know, a, a lot of people have wrong philosophies, wrong doctrines, wrong ways of looking at things. I've never become so strict in my understanding of righteousness than I have in the last couple of years. It's, it's astounding. I used to just go, you know, I remember God used me to carry revivals to many countries, many cities, and I was just like, just flowing, like blowing in the wind, in the breeze, you know, just everything was easy, everything was, and the Spirit of God was being poured out. And I didn't know the, the depths of gravity of foolishness of men until I ran into it. I had several revivals that were killed by a, a, a stupid pastor. Let me, let me say it right. It was never me. I was like innocent. I was like, it's still till today, I'm the same. I haven't changed at all. In, in that regard, it's like I'm innocent, I'm looking for good things, I'm looking for good people, and I run into all kinds of foolishness. I didn't do it. Someone was bothering me with something the other day, telling me about something, and I just shouted at them. I said, it's not my fault, and I, so I don't care. It's not my burden to bear, I don't, so I don't care. I have my own destiny to fulfill, and everybody has their own destiny to, to fulfill. You can't, you can't just say, well, I'm going to be concerned about everybody else. Don't be like the lady in Song of Solomon 1 that said, I've kept everyone else's vineyard, but my own I haven't kept. I mean, you got to take care of yourself to some degree. You know, people in the motivational speaking world, they talk about self-love, self-care, you know, all these different, you know. I like, but I like a lot of that because 
You'll find the roots of it in the Bible, ultimately. In the beginning, God created man in his own image after his own likeness and said, take dominion. What did that mean? Go after things. Why? Because you only have so much time. How much time do you have? The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children. That's nice. Lovely, isn't it? I mean, if you're righteous, you can offshoot that to offspring. Lovely, great, awesome. We, we love it. To such as keep his covenant and to those who remember his commandments to do them. Oh, my God. Did you know that Psalm 103 had this? People like the, uh, you know, the part, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is in me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits who forgives all my iniquities and heals all my diseases and redeems my life from destruction, crowns me with his loving kindness and his tender mercies, satisfies my mouth with good things so that my mouth is renewed like the eagles. Oh, my youth, I mean, my youth. It looks like my Y instead of M. Y-O-U-T-H-M-O-U-T-E. M-O-U-T-H, it's almost the same word. Your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness. And it's, he, has, he's, he gives justice to all the oppressed. Slow to anger, abounding in mercy. Oh, yeah, but then he goes on to say, so you got to read the whole chapter. You have to read the whole book. To those who fear him and to those who keep his covenant, to such as keep his covenant. Verse 18, Psalm 103. If you just read the first five verses, that's great for the healing part. But don't stop there. Go further because it explains... The latter part explains the former part. He's slow to anger. You know, sinners use that. They think there's no recompense for what they do. Let me tell you, criminals who, who do evil against others. I want to say that in, in, a, in a double-edged sword, in, in a two, part, two parts to the sentence. Someone who makes a mistake, you know, on their own, and they didn't know something. I, I could see like they're innocent or they, were, they weren't learned about something. And God could look at them and go, mm, uh, let me show them some mercy. But if you make it your mission to ultimately willingly hurt someone. <laughs> oh, my God. This is bad. I, 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 pe people like to teach too there are different degrees of sin rather that there's no degrees of sin all sin is sin no I think I think there's levels of it I think there's levels of criminality and some people say well they didn't know they didn't know what they were doing oh yes they did yes they did they knew it every day every minute every hour they were doing something wicked against another they knew exactly what they were doing and I want to prophesy again it seems like all this year the year is still young because we're in the third month, but uh, even last year, the year before to a degree, the Lord said, had me speaking about, well, the word of the Lord for this new year was the righteous are going to flourish, but the wicked are going to be cut down. So I, I want to say it again. Those that have done any harm against a good person, this is going to be the day and the hour of your destruction. And it's going to be messy for you and those that see it happening. <laughs> Let's go. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. and His kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word, his angels, even us, his people. Bless the Lord, you his hosts, you ministers of his, who do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. In all places of his dominion. And then it said at the end of it, the very last part of the last verse of the 20, 
Second verse of Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Once again, it opened with that. It ended with that. First part of the verse. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And then all that is within me, bless his holy name. So you see here when you look at this and you break it down and look through it all, you see how God is giving promises to his elect and people that do things correctly. For him, for his glory. I, I thought of that scripture yesterday. In all that you in all that you do and proceed upon, get wisdom and get understanding, but then the verse says, All that you do do to the glory of God. Create the life you want. You have the choice to do that. And when you meet a psycho along the way, or two or three, or people that are just untoward or unpleasant or different situations, just step right over it and keep moving. Because you're in the process of creating. You and God together, but you have to choose. Now what did it say in the 15th verse? Man, his days are like the grass. That's scary. And a flower of the field, as a flower of the field, so he flourishes. But then the wind passes over it and it's gone. And its place remembers it no more. In other words, the relevance and the benefit of your progress and well-being is, 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 all, is, all, is all dependent on you. So what do you want? You can choose what you want, try to embark upon it, get disappointed along the way. Never let the disappointment damage you. I tell you, I've had experiences, and it's terrible. It's terrible. It's shocking. It's, un it's unbelievable. It's unfathomable. You see somebody, you're like, wow, everything is great. And then all of a sudden, something comes up. Some demon. Some people, the issues they have, I want to tell, there's someone I want to tell straight up. I don't know if I'll get to tell them. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. Maybe I never will. Maybe I, maybe I definitely will. I don't know. We'll see how it flows. But this thing in them, something in them, it's a demon. And I want to ask them a question. Who did what to you? What happened to you? What is this about? You don't have the right. Oh, you know, it's good that the button got pushed, that we can see this thing, because we had to see it. Could you imagine? You're going along, everything's great, everything's flowing, and there's this, like, eerie creature behind the scenes in someone's soul or life somewhere. And all of a sudden, you know, later on, it just, it's there, it's covered up, it's hidden. No, it's, it's terrible, but you want to see it, you want to see it early. I pray, I pray, I want to pray and prophesy over everybody. Anything you're getting involved in, see the signs early of anything that's wrong. And either correct it if it's worth correcting, or step on and just say, moving right along, <laughs> Next. <laughs> but you don't want to find out later. This bishop in America, a very good, very great man. He's a very old man now. He's still preaching now. But he has a big church in one city in America. He made this statement years ago. He said, if it's going to be weird later, it's weird now. Everybody's laughing. I was laughing. I was like, hey, yeah, that's cheeky. That's a nice statement, Bishop. Thank you. If it's going to be weird later, it's weird now. Find out. And then don't, don't be ashamed of yourself in anything you go through along the way or anything that crops up because you know your own righteousness. According to this here, in this great passage of Scripture, oh my God. No one ever told you that before. The whole Psalm 103. Not the first five verses. 
Not the next part. Where, where's that verse that talks about healing? Oh, it's, it's there. It's in the third verse early on. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Very famous scripture. I saw somebody put uh, Isaiah 41.10 as a, as a slogan scripture for their, for their uh, I don't know, their, their marketing piece that they had there, whatever it was. And I thought, yeah, but what about, what about 11 that I stumbled upon last year? Isaiah 41, 11. Those that hate you are incensed with you. They'll be ashamed and disgraced. There's, there's a recompense back for people messing with you. You'll look for them and not find them. And if they continue to fight you, they'll, be, they'll perish. They'll be ashamed and disgraced for people to see. They'll disappear. No one can see them. And if they want to continue with their foolishness, they'll be down and then nobody will really see them again. And nobody wants to preach that. One demon I hate, it's a disgusting demon, and it's like, it lurks in the church, like this realm of religiosity that comes against certain things. It, it, it also ties itself, it's, it's a little bit deep. I, I don't really want to go into this, but maybe I, maybe I need to a little bit. It, it, it goes deep, and it, it ties itself to wounds in the soul. Like people guard their life from something. Just be free and shut up and talk or shut up or whatever. Just move and be happy. Be easygoing. Talk things out. Don't get stupid along the way. With, don't get hung up on something. I'm talking to somebody right now. Lord have mercy. Someone very innocently going along. And all of a sudden, something seems like it's good, and then something else crops up. Some demon. What's up with that? Why can't everything just be great? I don't know. I hate it. Why can't everything just, like, work out right? But you know what? God can do you a great favor when he shows you something that's... Uh, not good. You, you need to find out early. Lord Jesus. So in the life that we walk in that are full of disappointments and quirks and quacks and craziness of people with their psychoses and issues or whatever, throw your hands up to God again and say, Lord, I put my hands in the air. Wave them like I just don't care. Keep moving. One consolation at this is there's 8 billion people on the earth. So go find some more people. <laughs> I heard of a dear mentor of mine, a very old man, wise man, powerful man, very rich man, very successful. He's an A-lister in the body of Christ. He's a famous guy all around the world. Powerful ministry, powerful life. Brilliant. He said, in, in realm of relationship, he doesn't believe there's just one. Well, I wanted to debate with that because I thought God does have one person. Like the Lord spoke to me uh, recently about that issue, part of life. Spoke to me so clearly. I'm not going to go into details. It's, it's a private memo. Interoffice memo, heaven to the prophet. You know, let me leave it there particular thing that God said. But he, he has this philosophy that this, but he, but he got into it too much. You see, I'm, not, I'm glad I didn't say the name because I don't want to put any shade on, on my friend or throw any shade at my friend, as they say. Uh, he got too much into the too many. He knows so many people, looked through so many people, and finally, after a, a long time, Got hooked up, one person, and he studied them out for a long time. He, he went through a whole process, and finally. So, was it a lot of people, or was it, was it ultimately one? Was it the plan of God that that was it, and that's the best thing for him and the other person? I hope so. People are on the quest in life to find a great thing. You create that by, by your desire. I had my friend tell me, write these things down, whatever. 
and put it in an envelope and seal it and hold it up to God. I'm like, yeah, I did that already. I mean, you want me to do it again? Okay. Like, what do you want? You, 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 always, you, you seldom get in life what you, what you just desire alone, but you always get in life what you decide upon, like in great power. So make the right decisions, have the right desires, you know. Don't hesitate. I found, I found something here I want to read very quickly. Really great wise thinker said this. Keep your mind on the things you want and off the things you don't want. But sometimes the things you don't want will, will be in your mind for a little bit because it's an unpleasant uh, experience you had. You're going to think about it for a minute, but forget it as soon as you can. What? Another one here is totally silly. It's one of these blah, 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 philosophical. Here's, a, here's an acronym for GROW, G-R-O-W, kind of like this. G-R-O-W, get rid of old ways. O is two O's, of old. Get rid of old ways, get rid of old situations, get rid of old things that limited you, obstacles, blockages. Yeah, you have to discern. So keep your mind on the things you want and keep your mind off the things you don't want as much as you can. It's hard sometimes, but you, you can force yourself to do it. Can you say amen? Uh, obstacles. You have to look at is this thing an obstacle or is it a blessing? Is it a blocker or a blessing? B and B. Airbnb. Send a send a blocker to the air and keep the B of the blessing. It's not bed and breakfast. Who cares about that? It's only for a flipping day to stay somewhere. It's like a nut. It's a very menial thing. I mean, it's nice if you could find a nice place. Thank God for the service of that app and whatever it's doing. It's making people a lot of money, too. Wonderful thing. Brilliant creation. However, what's more important is, is it a blessing or is it a blocker? Anything that's blocking you, you have to move it. Block the tackle in football, American football, you know? They try to block the one running. They'll, tack, they'll hit them and knock them out of the way and tackle the one who has the ball if you want to stop them from gaining the goal, your, your opponent in the game, right? So there's this, it's, it's called a contact sport, physical contact. So where's the realm of, where's the realm of your physical contact in fighting your way through what you don't want to have in life? Create the life you want. It's up to you. It's not even up to God. I hate to tell you that. It really isn't. God is in control. He's in control of the migrants going to New York to get hotels for free. To hell with that and the man who did it, who's the resident. I didn't, you notice I didn't put the P in front of the R. P-R-E? No, it's R-E-S. And the buffoon, he should be a resident in, 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 a, in a nursing home because he doesn't even know where he is. The guy that did that, the process of all that, I'm telling you, God will judge it and throw it all into Hades. None of it's going to heaven. None of it. If some fool criminal gets saved in the midst because someone preached the gospel to them, bravo, you escaped hell. We hope you lived the life of righteousness that you can have this mercy of God that he says to those who keep my covenant and my commandments and fear me I can show you my mercy you see how it's conditional I think I just cleared up something doctrinally in a, this is big this is huge right here the, the, the mystery of mercy oh merciful God oh how where 
right here, Psalm 103, 15 and 16 and 17 and 18. 16. Yeah, no, 15 through 18, yeah. To such as keep his covenant and who remember his commandments to do them. I have it in my mind to do what God wants. It eats me up all day long, every day, seven days a week. It never stops burning in my soul. Let me tell you, this call of God is a fierce thing. It's not easy. To be called of God, you have so much responsibility to heaven, to earth, the situations, the people. You, 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 there's so much to do. There's so much to get done. It's not a joke. However, to please God in the midst of in the midst of what he's ordained us to do, there's a reward for that, and it's eternal. You know, when we finish this life, as the grass fades away and the flower, <laughs> flower withers, <laughs> as the grass withers and the flower blows, gets blown away or fades over, that day will come when we step over into the next day and we won't be crying about what price we paid. There's a realm of acquisition that you also have to give your your sacrifice, you know, doesn't just come for nothing. Nothing comes for nothing. There's an old song by this guy, he got saved, Billy Preston, and he went to be with the Lord. He's in heaven. He played with the Beatles, the Rolling Stones. He was with all those rockers. He was the, he was the organist. Nothing from nothing leaves nothing. You got to have something if you want to be with me. Don't have nothing and think you're going to be with me. Then he changed it when he was doing the gospel, started doing some gospel songs. He'd go to a church and you got to have Jesus if you want to be with me. Da, 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 da. You know how that song goes. It said nothing from nothing. He said, you got to have, you got to have something. You got to have Jesus if you want to be with me. And then he changed his own song a little bit. But his statement is true. Nothing minus nothing equals nothing. The minute you multiply a zero in the, in the mathematical equation, you end up with zero. That's deep. 100,000 times zero doesn't equal 100,000. It doesn't even equal 999, it equals a zero. The minute you throw a zero into the equation, it negates the whole thing and you end up with zero. So you gotta watch, yeah, you have to watch two things. You have to watch what people have or don't have are they a blessing or a blocker and then if they have something do they have some craziness in them that needs to be maybe it's something that could be fixed i hope so some people i really hope so certain individuals i hope it can something could be fixed if not what a tragedy but someone that's that's ultimately damaged damaged goods sail on by yourself figure it out along the way man don't don't get in my don't get in my space. It makes you want to just start cussing and screaming and shouting and complaining. You know this this thought of of uh, it's disgusting. Issues of, that people get by damaged, wounded souls. It's so sad. So, and that's, that's why to create the life you want, you also have to work on yourself. You have to let God fix a lot of things in you. I've been preaching about that last week. I did it twice. More than, more than twice. Four times, maybe. Four messages I did. One on the Holy Ghost and the glory of the visitation of God, which I had the whole day the other day. I had the whole day I was... What day was that? Was that Friday or Thursday? I don't know what day it was. A couple days back. The whole day I was in the spirit for like six, seven, eight hours. And God was talking to me and I did hours and hours of dictation and notes and commanding of things. Oh my God. Whatever day that was. A couple days back. Then I had a prophetic dialogue with a prophet friend of mine. It was really nice. 
Powerful, powerful things came, came through that message. And you can see them on Facebook. Facebook.com forward sign. Facebook.com forward sign Thomas Manton. T-H-O-M-A-S-M-A-N-T-O-N. People ask me, does it have the H? What is it? You think it's Tomas, like am I from Spain? T-O-M-A-S? No. Yeah, John chapter 20, and Jesus saith unto Thomas. I don't know any other way to spell Thomas. There's no T-O-M. It's T-H-O-M. <laughs> and that's written in the King James, baby. Then G- John and Jesus saith unto Thomas. Thomas, and it's not Thomas, it's Thomas. You don't, you don't pronounce the H. <laughs> Who are those people that can't say H anyway? Louis. <laughs> One guy says to me, yeah. I went to the shop, but the shop was closed. I'm like, I looked at him like, what? Oh, shop, I get it. <laughs> Yeah, the fist was very nice. The fist. Fish. Mm -hmm. So, Thomas is for Luos. They don't don't know how to say the H, so you know. It's Thomas. Which, what do these Kikuyu ladies? Tomas, like the preacher lady. Tomas, she goes like that. Thomas Thomas Manton, M A N T O N, Facebook.com forward sign Thomas Manton. Look on the page, you'll see them there. But the, but the week before, I have to post the other one from last Sunday. I think I didn't post it yet. I think I did the Sunday before, but I don't know if I put this Sunday up yet. I have to. It's on, it's on no, it's not even on, is it on YouTube? Oh, I have to release it. I have to release it on YouTube. Whatever, I, whatever day it was. The, um, the Lord said, I'm giving you keys I wanted you to teach you about victorious warfare, victorious spiritual warfare, how, to, how I want to destroy evil strongholds that attach themselves to your life. And then the second one, I went deeper into it. It was, a real, it was really, a hard, it's really hard to get that message done, but I got it done, man. It is there. It's brilliant. One, I'm wearing a blue shirt. The other one, I'm wearing the second one, a red shirt. Really cool back, uh, background design and all that. And then today I have this thing on. I don't know. It's black and gold, kind of like. So the, the Lord, and I'm in a different topic now, but the Lord spoke about name the, the mysterious things that attach themselves to people that get in them from attacks of the enemy. You have to get all those out of you to create the life you want. You got to clear the space. You got to clear the clutter. You got to clear. You got to clear the way. What does that entail? Entail. What does that involve? You will know, and but you have to take action. You know something? It's not enough. Like I said, God ultimately doesn't decide everything. He tells you what His plan is. But it's really up to you to walk it out. He doesn't do it all. He could show and reveal his plan. He said, I've made man after mine own image. I give you my power. My power comes upon you by the Holy Ghost when you receive the Holy Spirit. But now what are you going to do with it? You're just going to sit there and leave it like, well, it's just there. I I have it. I have access to it. But you never do anything with it. Then nothing's going to happen. Everything is by force. And if, if you only have an allotted time, like it says here in Psalm 103, then what are we doing with our time? How much time do we have? Father, I pray your mercy upon good people and people that even have issues that they, they, they don't understand what's going on. I pray you deliver them because the treasure that's in them is so good, it can't be, it can't be lost to some foolishness, but some things just, are just horrifically demonic on how they crop up to try to get in the way of relationships and connections and friendships and whatever. It's just wrong. I really pray God can fix things. I really do. If you're listening to me out there, well, not if, if you're, if you're hearing my voice, you're listening to me. But you listening to me wherever you are, 
I pray that whatever's wrong with you gets fixed. Because there's definitely some things that are wrong. With all of us. We have to apply the pressure and by God by His mercy because He sees we want to serve Him. He, he begins to touch us and fix things for us. Now, Romans 8.28 says what? Romans 8.28 says so powerfully. All things will work together for good to the one who's called according to his purpose, but the one who loves him. And I love Psalm 91.16 that says, with long life, the great Psalm 91. Take time to go through that again. I will satisfy you with long life because you love me and your mind is stayed on me. Like the great wise thinker said, really a biblical principle, keep your mind on the things that you want that are good and take your mind off the things that you don't want that are bad. That's very scriptural. Philippians 4 is at the 8th verse, right? Am I a teacher? Oh, yes. Am I anointed? Oh, God. How could I know all this, what I'm saying? You see, my, where's my notes? Where's my teleprompter? The day I'll come, I'll have all that. I'll have teleprompters up, screens over there. Because I want to reference things. Screens behind me. I'll click something and you'll see all my list of notes in PowerPoint or whatever you want to call it. And just we go through things like that. Online courses, masterminds. I'm gonna, I'm, mastermind classes, we're, we're going to create all those. I'm telling you in advance. Get ready to see them. And those will not be free. Some might be, but some won't. People are going to have to invest in the treasure. And I'm going to have specific topics of, and bring things you never heard anywhere else. Or I don't know how far you'd have to dig to try to find, or look or research to try to find someone like me to bring it to you like I bring it to you. I'm burdened about that. So at the time that comes, people could take their credit card or their PayPal account or whatever or send something through and get the click and the code and you come online and you've invested in education. Schools, what, is, is every school free? Is every course free? No, there's some that are free and there's some that are not. All these ones that go on the internet say, I'll give it to you for free. It's never free. There's always a catch behind it. They're going to they're gonna sell you something. But the thing they're selling you might be good. Take your money and invest in it. There are softwares I need. There are things I need. There's things I need to buy. You go and buy them because you're going to use them and they're going to benefit you. So what's, a, what's the complaint about money? And you make it free sometimes all the time. It's too free. And people think, well, it's just free. It's just there. Yeah. Have more respect. Invest in it. All things will work together for good for those to those who love me and are called according to my purpose. The Lord said, Jeremiah 29, 11 said, I know the plans I have for you. Says the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a great future and an expect, expected end. The destiny, the destination of greatness, of, of, of glory in your life. I want you to get there. I'm going to help you do it. Now, Philippians 4, I think it's the 8th verse. The things that are lovely, honest, just, and, uh, virtuous, and full of praise, and full of a good report. In other words, something positive, creative, and powerful that you're going to have, that's the things you need to think upon. More than the other. In fact, exclusively, fully, if you can. But of course, in this crazy world, things will crop up. You have a bad day, give it to the next morning. Another thing, don't panic. When something bad happens, never panic. Just stay calm. Stay collected. Stay confident. Trust in God. Psalm 20, some trust in horses and chariots, but I'm going to trust in the name of the Lord my God. God spoke. This is a smoke screen. There's something evil cropped up. It's a fiery dart. But I, I put it down with the shield of faith and I keep right on going. And let me tell you something, when you, you meet somebody good, it's a blessing. 
Like you meet someone like me, it's a blessing to have me in your world. Don't play with that. Because I could change my mind just like I change my shirts or my socks. You don't want me to do that. Repent of the damage that's in your soul. Get free. Move forward. Lighten up. Let's go. What's next? However, I got to say this too. I have, I have to I gotta. Gotta is not really the greatest English street language. I must also say this. God can give a sign and help you to deliver you from something that's a wrong connection. And it's very unpleasant when it happens. However, let the will of God be done. Because sometimes we as humans, we don't, we, well not sometimes, all the time, we don't see everything. Could you imagine that somebody brilliant, even prophetic, even graced, even anointed, can have trouble in connections with people and not see everything about them? Shocking. It got help the religious fool who would have a snide attitude and think, well, why didn't you see that? Well, you, you stupid thing yourself. You didn't see everything in your life. Look at your life. How great is it? Yeah, you are a role model. I play the violin. <laughs> it's a, I heard this guy, this prophet, this apostle friend of mine. Uh, he's a really great guy. I really, I really enjoy him. His ministry is really great too. He's a great, he's a great guy. He's a wonderful guy. Uh, funny enough. He said, uh, people that don't have a lot, they seem to have a lot to say. They're very successful people, they don't take that time criticizing, uh, criticizing others. They just, uh, they, they're busy. I'll give you an example. There's a billionaire in the world, I'm not going to say names, there's two billionaires. One was mocking the, this other one because he's very opinionated. And, and I say he's wrong. And they had a falling out. Something happened along the way. So he was, he, and maybe the guy came against him because he, he doesn't like, he doesn't take that kindly. You come against him, he's going to come back at you. Maybe the guy took a shot at him. So he's, I heard him bashing this other guy. So you think, and this other guy's a billionaire in business, very successful. So you think, ah, he's a schmuck, you know, he's a, he's a putz, you know. He, he's like that. But you know what, I, but I've been watching the guy, the one that was talked bad about by the other billionaire. And I'm, I watch his life. The guy is absolutely brilliant. He's amazing. And he, didn't, he doesn't take any time. You, or you won't see, maybe, I don't know if he does it privately, probably not. I think he's private the way he is public. He's all positive, and you can learn things from him by listening to how, how he carries on. And he's made some brilliant decisions, done some brilliant things in business, and he's made billions of dollars, billions, multiplied billions of dollars doing it. Brilliant man. So my whole perspective changed about him. You know, I listened to the first guy one time because we respect him, but then... It, it evens out along the way. Someone could talk about somebody and they're really the fool to slander somebody good, but the good person, the cream always rises to the top, the oil always rises to the top of the water. Just keep doing what you're doing. And don't worry about haters, you know. One, there's a few things that never, it never meant anything to me that people talk about. You know, like don't care what people think. I don't anyway. I don't have that problem. Don't care about, what's another one? 
everything's going to be all right. Don't tell me that. I know that already. I read the end of the book. You know, people pump each other up like everything's going to be all right. You know, it is well. And this statement like it is well. What does it mean it is well? Be religious. It is well. No, it isn't. It's getting well. <laughs> what was I saying this in the last message I did somewhere? I was talking about the well. The well is the well. The woman came to the well in, the, in John chapter 4. And Jesus said, I have the well of living water that I want to give you that's better than what you're seeing here. Because you came to get the water from this well of the, where, the, where the well is dug. And Jesus was just there. And I'm sure the Father showed him, go by the well and just wait. There's somebody coming. I know, I, I'm sure if I were to ask him in the, in, in, heaven, in the next age, Jesus, did you know that woman was coming? He would just look at me and go, mm hmm. Yep. Why was he there? Supposed to meet that lady. She, he was supposed to, maybe he had to wait. Maybe he had to wait a few minutes till she showed up. Or maybe he was directed there while she was there. We'll see. I want to ask God for the virtual reality of the, of the things that happen in the Bible. Like when the Jericho walls fell down and they shouted and the walls fell down. I want to see that on video. When the Red Sea parted and they went across carrying all the treasures and then they were rejoicing on the other side. I want to see that. Spectacular things that happen. The plagues of Egypt. I don't know if I want to see that be a bit too... Uh, daunting and har how harrow harrowing and horrific to watch, but maybe. I want to see the Garden of Eden. I want to see the animals on the, on the Ark of Noah. I want to see it. I want to see it. I want to see it. Do you think God has the virtual reality files in heaven? Sure he does. It is well. <laughs> Makes you want to you want to cough out some fur balls, like if you're a cat. You know. <laughs> it is well. Don't tell me that. What do you mean it is well? Is that a prophetic statement? It's going to be well. Then just prophesy and say things are going to work out. Be specific and give detail. Now it is well. Or oh, are you well? Maybe these people, what they do, like a little British thing, Af some of these Africans, eh, are you well? And they do the L like three times, L, well. Like I should slap you upside your head. Shut up, are you well? What do you think and what does it matter? Today is today, what am I doing next? What are you doing for me? Let's go, do something. Don't ask me how, how are you? <laughs> Gee. Let me stop to think. I was in the middle of something. You distracted me. I, let, me let me think about how, how you are. Oh. Let me think about it. What I say is great. Then I say, I'm great all the time, seven days a week. I don't have a choice. That always makes people laugh. I don't have a choice. I'm just me. I'm great. I'm a king. What do you mean? How am I doing? What am I going to say? Oh, you know... Oh, things are really bad, or things are really good. What does it matter? It only matters what's getting done. Create the life you want. Are you getting this? The philosophy of possession, acquisition, conquest, territorial takeover, dominion, is very powerful what I'm saying. Here. All of that, that's what you got to do if you want to get anywhere. And knock everything else out of the way, including people, situations. I like to say, I, say, I made another one today. So I don't like light, you know, light colors, white space, boring. Uh, I don't like boring things or boring people. There's other two things I don't like that I always say. I don't like things that don't work or people that don't work. Don't like it. When something doesn't work, it's very frustrating. When someone doesn't work and do something brilliant and creative, I have no time for that. Get out of my way. Are you a blessing or a blocker? Are you a catalyst of change for the better? 
Are you going to help bring me to the promised land? I'm going anyway. But are you part of the, are you part of the plan of action that's going to help me get there or not? Let's figure that out. Again, if things are selling good, make sure they sell good. It's your responsibility to fix whatever's broken, whatever's damaged, whatever's messed up. You have a responsibility to fix it. It's not, don't throw it on the other person. I'll say it again because it needs to be said. Because when I, when I say it, I'm, I'm sending it out into the universe. Like I, I'm, I, I'm, 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 what am I doing? I'm creating, reestablishing, solidifying the zone of, how can I say it? I'm trying to get the words for it. The reality of what is by saying, I'm innocent, I'm good. I'm always moving to produce purpose. I don't have any other problems. Know that. Who's perfect? Nobody. Am I? Absolutely not. Are you? Absolutely not. Never was. But we're becoming. Be perfect as I'm perfect. Be holy as I'm holy. Mark the perfect man, Psalm 37, 37. For the end of that man is peace. I love it. Mark the perfect man. For the end of that man is peace. So the striving for perfection is in us, needs to be in us. And when you learn something, even if it's a rude awakening or a painful thing that you're learning through, through whatever scenario, you, you, you got it now. I, and I also don't like, I don't like when people say, well, you learn what not to do next time. Why does it always have to be, why do you always have to go that way and say that? I would rather it was perfect the day before, but if you encounter things along the way, and we always do that, are very disappointing and debaucherous and demeaning and disrespectful and disconcerting, disappointing, disillusioning, you're like, wow, what is this anyway? Fix it. Hopefully it can be fixed. Because there's a treasure that helped. We need to get to the other side. Who's good all the time? God. Whose mercy endures forever? God's. Who does he show mercy upon? Those who... Take heed to his covenant. I'm going to read it again. To such as keep his covenant and to those who remember his commandments and do them. To do them and, do, and they do them. That's the one who gets blessed. 331 times in the Bible it was counted. And I believe the researcher, I believe, I believe him, I believe him. Because he's a seriously meticulous man. I believe him, I really do. And I don't have any reason to know if there's 300 or 335 or 400 or 200. I don't know. But he said 331 times in the Bible, throughout the Bible there's, and he had research done, there's places of decisions to be made. I'll tell you one, Habakkuk 2, verse 1. Let's look at that. I stand upon my watch to see what I'm going to say. And then the Lord said, write this thing down. So the decision had to be made to write it down. That's a good decision. That's a step in the right direction. Another one, blow the trumpet in Zion. I have to take the trumpet and blow it and create something in the spirit. Send Judah first, another place in Chronicles. Send the praises first. I made a decision and I took action. Walk around the Jericho seven times and then shout. On the seventh day, shout. The walls fell down. They made a decision to move. Isaiah 119. Learn to do well.
Verse 17 said, Isaiah 117, learn to do well. Then verse 18 said, though your sins were red as crimson, they'll be white as snow. You'll be forgiven, you'll be cleansed because you learned to do well. Next verse, 19, Isaiah 119. Said, if you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. So you make the decision to be willing and then be obedient to move and then God will give you the good of the land. Yes or yes? Yes. Decisions determine you fulfilling your destiny. You're getting there. God said in Jeremiah 29, 11, again, I said it earlier. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you, not to see you harmed, to give you the destination place, the, the expected end, the destiny. Wow. Thank you, Lord. He said, I am the Lord, beside me there's no other. So there's not another, it's only me. Are you in me or not? Are you doing my will or not? Are you striving to walk with me and get on with the program that I have or not? Create the life you want. You can do it. We have been given the power to do it. My power comes upon you by the Holy Ghost and then you'll be my witnesses. Where? Everywhere. Acts 1.8. Deuteronomy 8.18, right? The famous scripture that we love so much. I give you power to get wealth, to make and manage and multiply resources and monies. I give you the power. Isaiah 48.17 I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit and leads you in the way you should go. Father, I invoke again. Yeah, Lord, I see it. I invoke again what I spoke the last two weeks in a row about... um, Did I do them both on Sundays or did I do one in the week? I can't remember. But two... Yeah, I think I did one. I I I did Friday and Sunday. It wasn't just two Sundays. The, the previous Sunday, I did something else, another related message or not. I don't remember. So much happens for me in a day and then a week that I, like, like last week seems like three months ago in my mind. It's far away because so much has happened in the last, you know, it's like my life is like that. So what happened two weeks ago? Hmm, I have to go back and look. <laughs> I'm not keeping it in the, in the recollection. But the last... But those two messages that went together, victorious spiritual warfare, God destroying evil strongholds, I invoke them now over every person that's good. Whatever damaged you along the way, you need to be repaired because God has some good plans. I pray for the best to happen. We don't want to take anyone and toss them off and say, well, they're useless. Let them be fixed. But you have a part to play in that. You got to get your head together. You got to get your heart together. Cheeky statement, a bit crass, but Jesus was hung up for all our hangups. I don't like it so much, but you can kind of get the point of it. I posted something on my Facebook, said the blood of Jesus, they made like, a canister of the blood of Jesus said like a like hand sanitizer, you know, back when that whole nonsense was going on. And I, and I wrote it in the top because I, I think it means something meaningful. I said, I don't like this picture at all. I think it's crass toward our master. He suffered and bled and died. It's not something to go, you know, like just like the blood of Jesus, like it's some, you know, application thing like that. But the point is, apply it to everything evil because it, The blood of Jesus has the power to cleanse and destroy every evil. Can I tell you, one drop of the blood of Jesus is greater than all the hordes of hell. You want to chase demons? Just start talking about the blood. Lester Summerall used to say that whenever the service was funny, there was some weird atmosphere in the town or the place, he he would just sing this old song. And I love these old apostles. They can't sing worth a dime. Like one of my friends here in Nairobi the man can't sing. If he had to sing, you'd have to shoot him. 
if like you're on the firing squad, sing a good song and do it good, he 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 he'd go to heaven. He can't sing he can't he can't sing a song to save his life. Yet he does it anyway. He's like, oh, 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 oh. like please don't do that. Get your psalmist. You point that you get some lady or some guy that really has a voice and go now time, okay, go with the song and then let light the place up. But he doesn't do. It. I guess, you know, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Noise, yeah. He wants to sing himself. Can't sing worth the dime. Can't hold a a tune together. Well, Lester Summer was like that too. He'd go, oh, the blood of Jesus. That's all he could do. He couldn't sing it, you know. And when he'd start to do that, the whole audience would start to sing, you know. He'd start and they'd go. And the atmosphere would change every time. He said, if you see a demon... That's the way you chase them. You create your victory by using what? The blood, the word, the name, the authority of God. And teaching here is another part of it. I was in New York and these guys with swords, you know, these demon-possessed uh, racist guys with their robes on. You know, we're the black Israelites. You know, they used to have a table on the, on the, on the, on the, on the street. So I, I, I walked by and I said some things I shouldn't have said maybe. I, I was incensed. And, and they heard me, you know. I said them too loud. I don't know what I said. It wasn't good. It was very uh, confrontational, to say the least. I was mocking them, calling them devils and, you know, maybe in some colorful words I was using. Anyway... The guys got up, two guys from the thing got out from behind the thing and they started to walk toward me like this with their swords drawn. That swords, literally like swords, they pulled them out. I thought, oh man, this is serious. You ever have a moment when you feel like danger, danger is, the danger is real? You ever have a moment like that? It doesn't happen a lot in life, but when it happens, you're like, oh my God, I'm really... Like the time that 18 wheeler tractor the trailer was coming toward my car and it was going to hit and it did. You know, I saw like real danger, like your life flashes before your eyes. So here's what I did. The Lord had to give me an answer quick. I only had a few seconds. They were coming at me. I don't know if they were going to swing and try to cut me or what. I don't, they, I think they were, they were full of the devil. These guys were full of the devil. Enraged, angry, mad, hate the white man. You blankety blank, 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 cracker, whatever they want to say, white man, whatever they want to say. And they were coming, they were coming for me, right? So I just stopped. I turned around. I stood there. There were some people with me. I said, stop. And I said, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus is against you like that. I went like that. You know, these guys stopped dead in their tracks, bowed their head and turned around and went back. <laughs> That day I was like, thank you, Lord. I learned something else. Those demons in those guys know the power of the blood. All I had to do was say it. And they were done. Idiots. Go back to your table and pontificate your message of hate, you know. Who cares anyway? All dressed up with swords, you know. We're like the black, we're like the black chosen tribe. But I'm like, okay, blah, blah, blah. I'm the white man. My father was from Ireland. My mother was from England and UK, Scotland and Wales. whoop de doo So let me get the picture of Robert the Bruce on the Scottish 20-pound note that I... One time I was in London, I gave one to the, the black taxi driver. And the England don't like the Scottish, you know. They don't, they don't get along, let me tell you. So... I'm going to preach in a conference in a big cathedral in London. I'm dressed in my three-piece suit. I, yeah, yeah, those days, oh my God, I used to dress up really, really exceptionally. I'm on my way. I get in the black taxi from my beautiful duplex apartment in the West End. In the West, uh, I was, I was blessed. Felt feeling so heavenly, so uh, so elegant, anointed, ready to flow. Man, I was in some kind of zone. I felt like I, I'm the prince of whatever, royalty going through. So usually I'd have my car and driver come get me, but they were way across town, stuck in traffic. I said, I can't wait. I have to be there at a certain time. 
So I just walk out, I get to the street, and I'll hail the black taxi, you know. So this guy's driving. When it came time, it was about 10 pounds was the taxi uh, bill, whatever. About 10 or 11 pounds. So I give him a 20 pound note, pounds, but it was from Scotland, Bank of Scotland. And it was the picture of Robert the Bruce. <laughs> you ever see those guys, they put the, the metal mesh over their head? <laughs> I love the name, Robert the Bruce. What does it mean? Robert the Bruce. I feel the anointing. Oh, yeah, yeah. In that meeting, that man, God moved in that place that night. It was like the Lord was shaking the whole city of London. That was, those were amazing days. Father, please do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Send me again. Send me again. Send me again. People are waiting for me there. Oh, God. Hallelujah. I'm excited. Let revival hit England. UK, you call it now. United Kingdom. I have a problem with that calling England. England is England great. I like to call it Great Britain. Like, make Great Britain great again. Like, M-A-G-A. -A. Make America great again. Make M-G-B-G-A, right? Make Great Britain great again. I preach a message on that called Shake the Nation. And then pro pro prophetic predictions for Great Britain. I'm not going to call it England or the United Kingdom. To me, the United Kingdom, you have Scotland and Wales, which are different countries, all right, from origin. Scotland is one country, Ireland's another, now you have the North and the South. Northern Ireland, Southern Ireland, the Ire, which the Ire, the Southern Ireland, the mainland, that's my heritage, okay, not Northern Ireland, I don't know anything about that. Except my father was the one who made the peace treaty between them and England. And he brought Bill Clinton, who was the president at the time in 1994, to Belfast, Ireland, on Air Force One, the presidential jet, my father arranged it all. And he brought, Bill Clinton didn't bring him. Bill Clinton wasn't coming. My father brought Bill Clinton, the President of the United States, on Air Force One. They went together to Belfast from Washington, D.C. and signed the peace treaty. My father put it all together. And the violence and the terrorism from the, the IRA, the Irish Republican Army, and all this stuff against England, the bombings and all that stopped in 1994 forever. Till today, they haven't had a problem. My father did that. So Ireland is another place. Southern Ireland, the mainland, the main country, and then the Northern Ireland split off. London, Derry, and Belfast up there. Okay, then you have Scotland over there. Beautiful cities like Edinburgh and... Glasgow and, I don't know, a few others. Then you have Wales, a very interesting, unusual place over there. That's not one country to me. England is England. I call it Great Britain, okay? So, great, should be great. It's become ungreat. It needs to be made great again. There has to be a movement for that. How'd I get over in this? The Holy Ghost. <clears throat> so, I give this man the note. And he threw it back, he threw it back through the glass on the floor. And I reached down and picked it up. I said, what's wrong? What's wrong, my friend? And he said with his thick accent, I can't take that, with his British accent. I said, why not? He goes, look, Scotland, I can't take that. I said, I don't have any other money. I didn't. I had that. I had, that. I had a 20-pound note. Usually I have more, but that time I didn't care. I don't know what happened that day. I didn't have a lot of cash notes. But I knew, the, I knew the taxi would be less than 20 pounds. I knew it would be about 10, 10, 11 at most. So I thought it was okay. Do you know the man wouldn't take it and I got the ride for free? He said, I don't care. Just enjoy, you know, whatever. Like he's, he was using some funny, funny words, yeah? He was so incensed. This Englishman hated Scotland. Robert the Bruce. <laughs> so I, I made a joke about it in the meeting. I held it up and I said, Robert the Bruce, you know, I don't know if I, other English people in there might have got a little bit stuck going crazy, you know. I wish I still had it. Give me another one, Lord. A 20 pound Scottish note, a British, 
Scottish pounds. Well, it's, it's really United Kingdom. It's all the same money. It's the British pound, really. But it says Bank of Scotland. It has the picture of this guy with the mesh on his head. They were fighting the British. Robert the Bruce, the warrior. Like, if you want to relate in any way to it, in modern days, say the, the movie Braveheart with Mel Gibson would kind of tell the story a little bit about the fight between the Scots and the Brits, okay? Braveheart. But I thought that man's blood pressure went up, and he was messed up. He had a problem that he needed deliverance from. Who could do that? Let me, let me say something else. Good life for people, they need to be delivered from everything. Hatred, prejudice, racism, uh, cultural, tribal. I have a friend that prophesied the other day. He said he saw like, I said this already. There would be three waves of violence that would happen. Two of them have happened. The third one hasn't happened. Because we're praying all these years. I've been praying. I've been prophesying over, over Kenya. So three waves of violence in Kenya. One happened in uh, July of whatever year that was. I think it was 2007. When John Machuki, the minister of the government, sent the security forces to kill a bunch of this sect, this one sect of people. It starts with an M. Ends with an I and killed hundreds of them. And the violence that they were doing, the crime they were doing, stopped. Then, some months later, six months later, August, September, October, November, December, January, yes. Less than six months later, five and a half months later, the violence happened again, the post-election violence. Now, the Lord said there were three waves of violence that would go across Kenya. The third one has never happened. But a prophet friend of mine, he's as accurate as they come, said he saw another one coming up in a future election, tribal war. He said, now this can be stopped if people will pray enough, so let it not happen. But I saw three. So he's actually confirming what I said. That was in early 2007 I said that. So that would be what, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 17 years ago from now, I prophesied that. The Lord spoke, showed that to me in vision. It was the last day of May 2007 in the city of Nairobi when I prophesied that. June End of June, end of July, August, September, October, November, December. Seven months later, it happened. The post-election violence. Two months after that first, the first uh, violent wave happened was, was, was thing, something was sorted out. So both those prophecies came to pass. One two months later, one seven months later. And I told the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Raphael Tuju, in his office, all of these things, and he went and told President Mwai Kabaki everything that I said. Of course, they didn't know what to say, because this was in the month of August, 2007, when I spoke about superhighways being built and cities being developed across the country. <laughs> Road developments, superhighways, structures, train lines. Uh, what else did I tell them? The, the election violence, the violence after the election. I saw the division. Now, when someone tells you that in advance and you're, you're in a headship of government, what are you going to say to the prophet? Do you even believe what he's saying? But in January, Raphael Tuju came to my table at a prominent five, at one of the five-star hotels. I was having dinner. And he came up to my table and he was shaking while the violence was going on. He said, you told this to me in my office and myself and His Excellency the President were amazed, astonished, didn't know what to say, but now what you, you're the true prophet of God. What you said, it's happened. Then the Lord had me stand up at the platform and rebuke the whole thing and the violence stopped. 
So let's say it again, that it shouldn't happen again. People shouldn't be killing each other over hatred of another tribe. Look what happened in Rwanda. 800,000 people died in 100 days, slaughtered in the streets because of a tribal, a tribal hatred, one toward another. The Hutus and the Tutsis. But it never happened again. Religious wars. People say more people have died in the name of religion than anything else in human history. Hundreds of millions of people have died in religious wars. All satanic. When you see a religious demon crop up to stop progress in something like I've just seen happen, it's demonic. In the name of some, what would I call it? A dossier of doctrine or thought or something you think, you, you trip up a whole process of something that's good, including in, even them with human life. It's wrong. It's, it's satanic. It's not of God. Let me say it again. It's not of God. The thoughts you have that stop progress in a relationship or a flow or a connection, it's not from God. Deal with it. Fix it. Get rid of it. Create the life you want. I'm on that quest. Korama Morantala Shayata. I wrote a book called The Focus Factor. We're going to go to reprint on this. Sold out. I'm going to do an expanded edition of this about the, the power of focus. I wrote here, focus on your assignment. Also, what is prophetic understanding? Focus on being a blessing. Yeah, let me skip that. It's important, but... You only stay blessed when you bless others. That's true. You'll need help. How do you find it? How do you find your help? You got to focus on that. You have to reach out. A friend of mine said he wasn't good at being a reacher, reaching out to people. He said he wish, if he had to do things over again, he would reach for things more. I, I told some of my people, I said, I want to reach for people. I, I want to reach for people by the thousands. I want to communicate with thousands of people every day. I want to interact even with millions of people if I can, daily. Can it happen? Oh, yes. Will it happen? Yes, I say it will. I want to communicate with millions of people every single day, somehow. Look at men that are successful, that are doing great things. They communicate with masses of people every day. It adds up. They make a lot of money. They do well financially. They also produce a lot in their vision because they're working hard and they're reaching out to more people that can ever, than can ever respond to them. If you see the numbers of who's like online with them on their show or who's responding, that's a very small percentage of the people that they're actually talking to because a lot of people listen, but they never communicate. Do you know how many people are watching me from behind the scenes? I hear back from them once in a while. They were watching the whole time. They were there. And I'm like, you never said nothing. Where are you at? You're like hidden. But they were there. And they're there right now. I'm aware of that. But I want to I ramp the whole thing up and talk to millions of people. And bless millions of people. And empower the lives of millions of people. I didn't say hundreds. And I didn't say thousands. I said millions. And I, I always add this in because it seems like a, a, a very lofty thing to even, almost like an impossible thing to even consider. Even billions of people, can it be possible? I know one man, he says he broadcasts over, over a billion people through his television network programs. And you look at him, he's very blessed. 
and he talks big, you know, about big numbers. I mean, but you know the numbers that he's talking about because if you're talking to like over a billion, he, he even said one time it's almost like two billion potential reach of audience. So if he says, I, I got hundreds of thousands of people on this, a million people on that, that's a small percentage of that bigger number. So it kind of makes sense. I have to tell you something. If you're in business or ministry or whatever, what the heck are you trying to achieve if you're just reaching a few people? What do you expect out of that? Step up the game and go to more people. Father, I thank you. In Jesus' name. All right, all of you that don't have my book, Prophetic Keys to Successful Living, you need to get it. We're also going to reprint with uh, Success Strategies, 66 Prophecies for Kenya. This is coming out. Where's the Laws of Success? I saw it here. The Laws of Success is coming out in, expand, in an expanded edition. That's just about ready. And it's delayed by a person. So it's not my fault. I want to get it done. I'm innocent. I just want to get it done. But other people are involved. They need to get it together. Supernatural Operations of Spiritual Conquest through the Office of the Prophet, a book about the prophetic flow very fierce revelations in here about aggressive behavior prophetically that God will actually honor and get great things done. Another book is coming out. It's going to be the prophecies of political prophecies and national prophecies I've given over a certain nation. We're putting them into a book and uh, all of these getting compiled into a book. I need to get it done like yesterday. And uh, all right, as I said, opening this message, I'm going to get into more things in this about the power of your choice to create what you want. You have to take action or else it doesn't happen. Don't blame everybody else and don't play the victim if you haven't done enough to do something, to solve something yourself. You take the action and go and you'll get the results. You ever see all these things that are opportunities? You don't swing at it. You don't do the thing that it takes to make the opportunity work. Then what are you going to do? I saw this girl. She looks like a, like a young lady. The way she dresses kind of uh, male. Maybe she's one of, you know, she's in the community. She's, I think she's in the community. But uh, she looks like it for sure. You never see it. A lady, she got a man's haircut, looks real. Uh. And she talked about, she says it's like she made two million dollars. Two million dollars. Young, young, young lady. Online. She made two million dollars from one program she did. So I took the link and I started sending it to people. About, uh, who's going to do it? Guess what? There was like 12 different ingredients that may seem a little bit difficult, but not too difficult. If you really can get into doing them, what you have to do all of them. You have to do one, then the other, then the other, then the other, then the other. You have to work it. You have to look at it. You have to fix it. You have to stay with it. Or else it's not gonna, you're not going to get anything from it. So I'm thinking, I want to do that, but I'm too busy in what I'm doing. I can't take time to get off. I'm, I'm God's prophet to the nations. I'm busy in what I'm doing, okay? Business enterprise is another thing. Other people need to do these under my oversight. I've been praying. I've been praying all week, and I've had visitations from the Lord about this. I'm, I'm doing what I'm talking about. I'm living this thing. Create the life you want. You choose it. And then when, you, when God sees you're serious about it all, he'll begin to answer by fire and begin to help you along the way. Lift your hands right now. I'm not done, but I'm going to stop. We'll pick this up another time. Father, thank you that you're giving us power. This is very powerful. This is a very powerful message, my Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this. Let us continue in this. Give me more regiments of principles and thoughts from you about how people can actually do this. Not that it's a concept in the sky that I go, wow, that's a revelation. That seems, yeah, I hear you. But what can we actually do to create the life we want? I'm going to continue. But Father, I thank you that when we show your, our seriousness to you, 
you got to help us. you got to help us. Now, whatever we need, whoever we need, whoever we don't need, they're going. Whoever we need, they're coming. Whoever is a cracked actor along the way, unfortunate, fix the crack or step aside. Whoever is uh, a, a blocker, they have to be removed. Whoever is a blessing, let them be enhanced and accentuated and, and do more. We thank you, Lord, for the brilliance of creativity, wisdom, knowledge, understanding. My God, I feel the anointing falling here. The power of your presence, the power of your beautiful essence of life, the power of your entrepreneurial excellence and brilliance, the power of, of helping us to create and build literally an empire within the empire to build what it is you've ordained. And that involves people. That involves resources. Really, the mission is people. Really, at the end of it all, it's humanity that matters. Who gets saved? Humans. Not animals are nice. There could be animals in the animal kingdom in the next life. I believe the way you'll see beautiful lions walking around in the Serengeti over here, you probably have nice tame ones that won't bite you up there. Why not? But there's no like plan of the gospel for a soul of an animal. They die, they die. If God's going to create them again in the next world. But, but there's heaven and hell for humans. So ultimately, the commodity of the mission of the gospel is people. <laughs> even, in, even in relationships, even in life, everything's about people. So we need the right people to be working with us. But I don't just want to dwell on that alone. We want to talk about the souls of men. What will it gain a profit of man if he gains the whole world. What gain did he have if he, if he profited by gaining the whole world but lost his own soul? I have a friend in America, a great apostle, he just said, when the hurricane hit south, southwest Florida, Naples, Florida, there were billionaires with $20 million houses, 10, 15, $20 million homes. They were walking around outside. Why? Because their Tesla wouldn't work. Or they couldn't get petrol because everything was closed. Uh, they couldn't charge their car or they couldn't get gas. They had cash or they had a credit card, but there's nowhere to get the money out because the hurricane destroyed everything. Everything was flooded. Buildings were knocked down. All the businesses were closed. They're walking around trying to get food for their house. They had a beautiful house, lots of money, everything there, but the weather destroyed the whole area. And they're walking around like, 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 a, like, a, like, a, like a poor person, like a homeless person. Yet they're a billionaire, millionaires. Millionaires and billionaires. We're reduced to the state of not even be able to function in their daily life. They never thought it would happen. Then this church sent supplies down. Then, of course, the FEMA and the Red Cross will come. You know, but the church went first and, and spent about two, two plus million dollars to bring supplies, and I know, the, I know the man, I know them very well. They sent supplies down to help them, and they were giving food and supplies to them. They sent trucks down from the north of Florida down to the south of Florida where the hurricanes did it, and were giving them things. Here are these men that are the proudest, you know, on top. They don't need anything from anybody. And they're receiving a gift like they're a poor person, and they're crying, thinking, almost crying, thinking. Never thought I'd be in this situation, but thank you very much. <laughs> Somebody else that had the gospel, and then they've got to preach the gospel to them, you see. That humbling effect that happened through circumstance. So life is like that. At the end of life, what do you have? There's another man who's a billionaire, worked his whole life, retired, went down to the south, tropical paradise, Got a beautiful house. He jumped into the canal water to swim. Mistake. The saltwater crocodiles were there. And ate him up. First day. First day there. They said it was his first day there. He traveled down from New York, or I think it was New York, down there. Went for a swim where he shouldn't have gone. He didn't know. He's dead. Eaten by crocodiles. Alligators. Saltwater alligators.
So he had the whole world, right? But his soul, what what about his soul? So that's something we need to get more into. the, the The life you want and desire should be to win souls. Got to go there. Have to get there. Why would I teach this whole message to just help you straighten out your life and you don't think about the main event? You know what God is interested in? He doesn't get thrilled over diamonds and rubies and gold and houses and money. It's all there. What does he get excited about? The Bible says heaven rejoices when one soul comes into the kingdom. Father, help us, please, to win souls. We've asked you for a lot of souls to come with us. Give us the ways to reach out to people and to raise up other people that can go win souls, that we have fruit to our account because the commodity that you're looking for to acquire are the souls of men. If you're listening to me and you've never confessed Jesus as your Lord, Do this right now. Say, Father God in heaven, in Jesus' name, I accept the free gift of eternal life that you offer to us through the death, burial, and resurrection of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. I receive you, Lord Jesus, as my Savior, as my King and my Lord. Forgive me of all my sin. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Let me be yours. Bring me to yourself and I receive the gift of eternal life. I receive you as my Lord and Savior right now in Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, write to me and let me know. Take this as a clip too, just this point. Let's throw it around. I, 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 I want to uh, pray for you more that you really walk with God. And remember this promise in Psalm 103, verse 17 and 18. The mercy of the Lord is to those who walk in His righteousness and keep His covenant and want to do, to understand His commandments and then do them. His mercy is for them. So as you walk with God, you'll experience good things. And when you accept Jesus as your Savior by speaking it, out of your mouth, you remove yourself from the kingdom of darkness, which is on its way to hell, and you take yourself over into the kingdom of light, which is on its way to heaven. You just joined that family. And we welcome you into the family of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Be blessed. Love you much. Talk to you later. On that note, I'll take flight. You can sow into this grace. The headings of the titles of the messages have all of the links on how to partner with this ministry to send your tithes, your offerings, your seeds, and your, your, your outreach donations to help us reach the, reach the world with the gospel. And you're doing a transaction, a blessing for yourself. Make sure you do that. So it's offering time. I look to hear from you. And I'll be praying over you as you send your love donation and gift into this work, into this anointing. As you sow seed into this anointing, God's going to prosper you in new ways in Jesus' name. Create the life you want. It's our choice. I'll continue in this. I'm Thomas Manton IV. The Lord bless you. Talk to you on the next one.